Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas, and I am the director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to take a look at different ways that you can make animations using Plotly in R. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So we're inside R Studio right here. You can see for yourself. And we're going to start by, of course, loading the packages that we need. So we need three packages here. Ekdat, that is where our data is going to come from. We're going to be taking from several different data sets inside this particular package. Plotly, which is, of course, the package we will be using to make our animations. And, of course, dplyr to move stuff around when necessary in terms of data manipulation. Now, for our first scatter plot here, we're going to just do a basic animation. So you can see that right here. So what we're doing here is we're taking the crime data set, which comes from the egg that package. And we're going to make a basic scatter plot where we're going to map density and crime rate. So population density, and we're going to add some colors. So it's going to be colored by region and the frame. In other words, how we're going to animate the change is going to be by year and the ID is going to be going to be by county. Um, so that's what we're going to do. The ID is useful to make sure things don't skip around in the animation. Uh, that's kind of technical for right now. So um, that's how we're going to do it in this particular example. So we're going to go ahead and press control enter here after we highlight it. And if you look off to your right, you can see we have our little animation here. Now, remember, we have all the same interactive features at the top that we normally have with Plotly. So if I hover over something, you can see that it lights up. Um, I can zoom in or whatever, but that's really not the focus of this video. What we really want to focus on is the animation. So if we go down here, you can see there's a button called play here and you can see there's several numbers, 81 to 87. These numbers come from the frame here, the year. That's where that came from. Um, the colors comes from the region. That's why they're the different colors. And the ID is by county. Like I said, that keeps track of things. Sometimes it might skip around if you don't put the ID, IDS there. So if we go ahead and press play here, you can see for yourself. As things move around, you can clearly see that. I'll do it one more time in case you missed it. So here we go. You can see how it's moving as we go from year to year. And that's the power of animation. And so, of course, there are ways that we can tweak this. So let me go ahead and show you the next piece of code here. Now, in this piece of code, here's what we're doing. Number one, we're going to filter by year. So we only want year 1985. That's all we want. We don't want the other years. This will make more sense in a second. The next thing we've seen this line of code right here in line 13. We're going to plot. We're going to make a scatter plot density by crime and crime. Now for the add markers, we're going to change the size is going to depend on the tax PC. So how much the taxes were. We're going to color by SMSA. These are all variables inside the crime data set in the egg uh, package. The frame is not going to be by year this time. The frame is going to be by region. So it's a different way of looking at change. Instead of looking at change over time, we're going to see the animation go from region to region. Again, this might not make sense per se, but we're just trying to demonstrate how you can animate things in different ways using Plotly. And then the marker size, this is like how big the dots are going to be. Another way to look at it. It's going to be by the average, excuse me, by the variable abs, S, S, E, N. Again, this is another variable from the uh, crime data set. So we're going to press control enter here. And you can see that there are different size dots depending on whatever it is. We have density along the X axis and we have, of course, crime rate um, going across the Y axis. Everything is uh, determined, the colors determined by SMSA. That's another variable. And so if we click on animate down here. You can see that there are three different regions, other, west, and central. So watch carefully. Press play. All right, done. That's all it took. I'll play it one more time. Now, 
that animation was kind of fast. And so, of course, you know there's a way where we can slow that down, of course. So we're gonna learn that next because you can adjust and control the speed of your animation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you this uh, code again and explain things step by step, starting in line 19. So, okay, in line, in line 19 through 25, this is the same code as before. The only difference now is, is that we're going to save it as an object called slow underscore animation. So we're gonna save it as an object, and then we're gonna add this little piece down here to affect the animation. So it's called animation underscore OPTS, or options if you will. So this is the number of frames, and this is the transition speed. So what's gonna happen is that by manipulating these numbers, I can speed up or slow down the animation. So like I told you, lines 19 to 25, you've seen this before. This is all the code from the previous example, except now we're saving it as an object called slow underscore animation. I'll press control enter here. Now we're going to go ahead and add our animation options here to slow it down. We wanna slow it down so you can see things. I'll press control enter here. And now you can see, we still have the same information as last time. And so let's go ahead and see the difference. So you can see it moves much slower. I'll play it again for you one more time. Watch how slow it moves. All right. And so things were slowed down because we changed the frames and the transition times. That's the major difference there. And that is the power of being able to manipulate the speed of the animation. Now, I think we're gonna move on now. We're almost done here. This is our second to last example. It's kind of complicated, but I'm sure you'll be able to understand this, starting in line 32. Okay, so here's what's going on. All this stuff right here is the same as last time. We've seen this before. We're making a scatter plot, density, and crime rate. And what's new this time is we're going to make a little, you have to see it to believe it basically, but we're going to put a little, on the screen, we're gonna put a little number in the back that's gonna show how the year goes by. This is just a tool to help the, uh, the consumer of the, of the graphic to kind of understand what's happening here. So let me just see if I can go back. Hopefully it's still there. So you can see down in the lower right hand corner, we have the numbers for each year here. But what we're gonna do now is, is that we're gonna put that number up here at the top so they can see the number change inside the actual plot. That is our goal with this one. So we're going to do that by using this code right here as the main gist for this. So we're gonna add text. The X and the Y is telling Plotly where to put the, the text. So over here, the X is gonna be four and the Y is gonna be 0 0.1. So it's gonna be about right here in the middle of the plot there. Now the text is gonna be the year. That's what this is here. And I haven't mentioned this, but I'm assuming you know this already. Notice the constant use of the tilde key when you're trying to specify variables here. The frame, in other words, what is going to change is gonna be by year also. And then the next argument we're gonna set is the text font. So it's gonna be, we're gonna set it to a list of color uh, we're going to use this command here 2 RGB and it's going to be gray 80. So the color of the text is going to be gray and the size is going to be 150. I think it's like 150 pixels. Now this stuff underneath here is just going to set up our, we've seen this before. Re, it's going to be color by region. The frame is going to be year, which is the same as the frame up here. So it's the same and the ID is going to be by county. And the last thing that's new is we're going to hide that little animation slide that was at the bottom. That's what we're gonna do here. So this little slide that was at the bottom, that's going to disappear. You'll just see the play button. So this is all theoretical right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right, you can see it right there. And so here we go. Notice if I hover over things, I can still of course get the information. Notice it's 81 in the background is gray. All that came from 
this text right here that we added to our code. That's where this came from. Notice how it starts at about 0 point, uh, at 4 and it lines up at 0 0.1. That's the XY coordinates right here. The text is year. That's why it says 81. And the size is 150. That's why it's a giant 8 and a giant 1. That's what's happening right there. Now, if you look at the lower left-hand corner of the actual plot, you can see the play button. And when I click play, not only will the dots move according to the year, but that 81 will change to 82, 83, 84, etc. So let's watch this. You can see it right there. It went from 81 to 87. I'll play it one more time. So you can see for yourself. Now, of course, we can keep adding to that. We can change the speed of the animation if we desire using the information above, but we're not going to do that in this particular video. Now, we're going to move to our last example, and that is to show a line plot and how it changes over time. So this time we're going to use a slightly different data set. We're using the strike NB data set, which talks about the number of strikes. Again, this is from the EGDAT package. So we're going to split on time. That's what we're going to do. This is kind of hard to explain and understand, but that's how it is. And then we're going to accumulate and we're going to use the bind rows uh, command here, X and Y. Again, for now, just do it. It's kind of hard to explain what's exactly happening here. Set names is going to be one to 108. Now, this number comes from the number of observations in the data set. So in other words, there's 108 rows of data there. We're going to buy rows by the ID of frame. Of course, um, that's what we're using to keep track of our changes. So let's just see here. Strike in B. That's what we're doing here. So you can see the variable time is right there. That's, of course, one of the variables. And then we're going to ID by frame. So that's going to be set for us using the set names. Now, after we do that pre uh, preparation, we plot by time and output. So those are two variables inside the data frame. And then we add lines. So frame, remember, this is our friend up here is going to eat equal, excuse me, sort as numeric frame. That's where it's coming from. Now, this is tricky. If you don't do this, what happens is that R will go from one and then it'll go to 10 and then it'll go 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It will not go in numeric order. It goes by, okay, ones are going to be first and then twos. So it's kind of weird. So you have to sort it and you have to make sure that you tell R that it's numeric. Otherwise, it will not work properly. So we're going to go ahead and run this. It takes a while. All right. Now, notice the bar down here, how it's in, in the lower right hand corner here, is in nice and neat order from 1 to 105. If I remove this, sort right here it gets messy so let me go ahead and clear that out clear this out do i need this i don't need this either okay now watch what happens here it's thinking and now if you're looking closely you can see here that it goes from one then it skips to 102 106 and 12 then it skips to two that's the, the headache so now that you know that, you know why I put those extra commands in there. So I'm going to go ahead and run this again. It's thinking. All right, it's ready. Now this is kind of slow, so be patient. But when I click on this, it's going to slowly draw the line graph over time. So go ahead and watch this. Let's see here. So you can see it's drawing like that. It takes a while. Um, as each year goes by, it kind of maps it. And of course, we could manipulate the speed of the actual slides, you know, by using other options that we've talked about earlier. But you can see it's drawing it. So again, if you're trying to explain something to an audience where this might be powerful and useful, you can see how it could be, you know, helpful in helping them to understand something. Or if you're setting up a, a website, this might be another time where this type of a tool is useful. So that's kind of what's going on here. And we're almost done. Go all the way to 105, I believe, 108, excuse me. And you can see how the how uh, output changes over time.
very powerful, useful tool for whatever your particular goals are. So remember, you have to split based on time. That's one of our variables, I believe, in this uh, particular data set. Yep, that's one of our variables. And then use the accumulate function to bind by X and Y. You're, this is just pre-set up. Then you set your names, and it should be the number of observations you want to put in the actual uh, plot. Then you bind by this one, bind underscore rows. The ID is going to be frame. And then the, this other stuff right here, you have seen this before. Um, but also remember that frame needs to be numeric. Of course, if it's numeric, obviously, if you don't do that, you're going to get that out of order stuff, and it looks really weird. So that's pretty much all that needs to be discussed in this particular video. Let me go back and summarize and then wrap this video up. So in this particular video, what happened was is that we learned about some of the basic ways that you can do animation using Plotly. So we focus primarily on scatter plots. Of course, this is not the only thing that you can do this for. You can also do it for line graphs as you just saw. But um, you just gotta make sure that you know what you wanna set your frame to. Your frame and your ID. These are the two new things in this video. The frame is like, okay, how am I going to map the changes? It could be by year or by a categorical variable or whatever you want. And then the ID is just for like making sure things stay in a cons consistent so it doesn't get crazy um, at times, which you'll see that if you om omit that. And then of course we learned about in this example, how to do it with a categorical variable rather than by year. Then over here, we learned how to manipulate the speed of the animation. So this is some extra functions and arguments you might want to set if you want to speed up or slow down the animation after you, of course, create your plot. Um, next, we learned about how to put a text in the background. If you remember right here, let's see here. Right here, we learned how to set the text in the background. This is a powerful visual so that people know what's going on in the actual um, animation. And then lastly, we learned about how to, of course, actually have a line graph animated over time, which could be useful, again, depending on what your goals and purposes are. So I want to thank you so much for watching. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you again for watching, and you take care.